When we're reviewing the sources of information used in psychology, it's important that we can cast a critical eye on that material and determine whether what we're viewing is scientific information or non-scientific information, specifically whether we're viewing evidence, an opinion, or an anecdote. So an anecdote is a personal version of events, thus it is highly subjective, but it can't be backed up with any empirical evidence. Now, an opinion on the other hand, may be backed up by some evidence, and that opinion might be shared between multiple scientists or psychologists, but there's no consensus because that information is limited. And therefore, what might happen is over time that opinion might be disproven. So therefore, we don't have consensus amongst psychologists or scientists at large. So what we really want to see when we're viewing material is evidence. Evidence is objective. Evidence is backed up by facts and evidence, generally we have consensus. So just to illustrate, let's go through a practical example where we're looking at the power of exercise as a protective factor against dementia or if you want to be specific, Alzheimer's. So remember an anecdote is personal. So for instance, I know people, old people, my father who exercises, he's 87, he's cognitively sharp. So therefore I might have my own personal anecdote that aerobic exercise in particular is a very powerful um, preventative activity for the onset of dementia. So it's not hard to dig around on the internet, for instance, to find a bunch of secondary data that reports on the, a bunch of case studies and experimental evidence that shows that exercise, as I said before, is a powerful preventative activity for the onset of dementia. But there's so many other variables that come into play like diet and genes, etc., that we can't categorically say that if somebody exercises throughout their lifespan, that they're, they're never going to experience the onset of dementia. There's just too many other variables that come into play. Um, and particularly given the fact that Alzheimer's is, is, is can only really be diagnosed from an autopsy, it makes this a very uh, difficult field to get robust evidence. So the best way to unravel this research dilemma is to ask ourselves, what evidence can we find for the benefits of exercise for dementia? And so therefore we can do a bit of a search and find some statistical information, ideally with a within subjects design where we can basically look at a before and after study. So before we, the patients are not doing much exercise, we get them doing aerobic exercise on a regular basis and we do some type of before and after measurement that's objective. So for instance, measure the density of the gray matter in the hippocampal region before the onset of the exercise program, get them to do um, some type of weekly exercise re regime, and then we measure the density of their gray matter um, six months down the track. Studies have been done in this area that have shown that we can actually increase the density of that area of the brain in the hippocampal region, which is critical for the formation of long-term memory. And so therefore now our, our opinion, our anecdote is backed up with evidence, with data that can be replicated. 